Hey guys, just last week we saw the biggest theft in crypto history. Over $400 million worth of NEM was stolen from a Japanese bank, uh, not bank, crypto exchange. And this is why we're really making this video here today is just to let you put your ZEMs in a nice safe place. Obviously, if you have a nano wallet, that's fantastic, and you've got the private key or the WLT file locked away somewhere safe, that's really cool. But should that private key get into the wrong hands somehow, um, then this is what you can do. Set up a multi-sig account. This is what the guys from CoinCheck didn't do, and I have no idea why. It, it turns out that a lot of those... Um, the four, the, the 500 odd million them which was stolen or them, uh, a lot of those actually belong to CoinCheck itself. So although some were their customers that were holding that money on the exchange, um, certainly a very large percentage actually belonged to CoinCheck. And why they didn't have it held in a multi-sig account has baffled Long Wong, Lot <laughs> Long Wong, and um, as you see here. It says, as far as NEM is concerned, uh, the NEM tech is still intact, so they will not be doing a hard fork to recoup the money. Uh, also, they've exchange, uh, advised exchanges to make use of the multi-signature multi smart contract, which is among the best in the landscape. Um, CoinCheck didn't use this, and that's why they could have been hacked. So what we want to... To run through briefly with you today is how to go about setting up that for yourself on your nano wallet so let's go and take a look at that so here we go this is my nano wallet and we'll just log in here now I've already gone right ahead and set up a couple of test accounts so on the test net this is with fake Zem, not not the real Zem. Uh, I've got my crypto current account so this would be something that you'd use for day-to-day uh, spending and doing normal transactions. Then the savings account. The savings account is the one that I want to turn to a multi-sig account. This is the one that will hold like, you know, 90, 95% of the Zem. And then we've got the accountant. He will be one of the co-signatories, if that's what you call them, the, uh, the counter, the people that have to sign it to authorize the transaction. I can't remember the exact term for that. And, and then, you know, another one, Crypto Order to 1 and Crypto Order to 2. So, if we take a look, we're going to go into, in fact, just briefly, we'll go into the normal account. Just stick in the password. Uh, one of the things to have them come on board as a counter signatory is um, that they have to have a primary key. So, to set this up, you have to have first um, done a couple of transactions send them some Zem and get their account to send the Zem to somebody else and that gives you a public key. Once you've got a, cup, uh, a public key, then they can become a co-signer for the multi-sig account. So let's log out of that and we'll log into the one, the savings account ready, oh, let's put in the password. And let's go ahead now and set up the multi-sig account. So this has got the most of the Zem. We've got a whopping 84 Zem in this, but it's all test money anyway, right? So it doesn't really matter. Hit services and come down in services. First of all, we're gonna to go to the address book. Okay, and in the address book, I've put some of the, um, some of those which are gonna be the cosigners already. Now you don't have to do this step, but I just found it a little bit easier when actually setting up the multi-sig on your main account. And what we're going to need is the account. So we need order to two's account. So just go right ahead, click new contact, put in the label, which will be crypto auditor two. That's it. And then paste in the address. That's the account address, not primary key, just the account address you'd normally send funds to. And there we go. We've got them all in there. So we're going to head back to the services and convert an account to multi-sig. And this one is the account to convert pri uh, private key. So this is the private key of the this account here, the crypto savings account. So once you've got that copied, just paste it in, and it will come up with this information here. 
And now we get to the co-signatory. Now what I'm doing is I want to put in uh, four co-signatories, co okay, which is with the auditors, the accountant, and the normal current account. And I don't want to have all of those four to have to sign um, to allow the funds to be released. Just in case you may end up with somebody's away on holiday, somebody's lost their laptop, you know, someone's dog's died, they not, can't contact them. So just to make things nice and simple, because if you did lose a private key off one of these accounts and say you had five minimum signatures required and only five um, co-signatories, then um, if you lost one of those accounts, you lost the private key, you couldn't restore it, you can't move funds out of that account anymore. So I'm just going to go for minimum of two of four. Okay, so right here, we'll go for two out of four. And since we already put all the account details into the address book, all we have to do is click on the open address book and choose from the drop down. We can put in the crypto current account. There we go, it's over there on the right hand side. And then let's add the accountant. And then we should add auditor number one. And we'll add auditor number two. And there we go, so we've got four auditors and any of these auditors can actually uh, begin a transaction uh, from this account and we'll see that in just a moment. And we need a minimum of two people to sign this off. Um, and there we go, the fee for setting this up is 0.05 zen, which I say is totally cheap, that's like about 50 cents, which it has me, I, I don't understand why uh, the guys down at Coincheck didn't set this up at least on their own account, if not everybody else's. You know, it's not something which is difficult to set up, and once done, you hear the little ting sound, and now this is a, a multi-sig account, so let's try and send in some Zem. So if we go to the address, we'll try and send some Zem. Let's send five Zem. Test send. Okay, and we'll stick in the password and let's see if it works. There we go. Failure transaction not allowed for multi-sig. You see, you, this is what would happen if a hacker tried to hack in and send from your multi-sig account and withdraw your funds. They can't do it. Once it's multi-sig, you cannot send funds from that account. So what you need to do is log out of there and go into one of the other accounts. I'll use my current account. Okay, so we've got here, it shows up that it's create multisig account. We've done that, and let's go to send. And you have it here, the, the option of send normal or send multisig. So let's click on multisig, and all the multisig accounts, which of there is only one <laughs> for this, and it'll come up, and that's the balance of the multisig account, which you're sending from. And we're going to send it, who shall we send it to? Let's send it to the accountant. Okay, so we'll put on that we want to send the accountant 5 Zen. And we'll call her, this is holiday pay. <laughs> okay, don't know why we're going to pay him to go on holiday. But we'll stick that in. And uh, we'll put that we're going to send that. There we go. So this, this one, the current account, has just initialized the transaction from the uh, the multi-sig account. Let's go out of there and we'll go into one of the auditors. Auditor number one. Okay, we can see that we've uh, created the multi-sig account. And let's just go into services. And we've got sign multi-sig transactions. We just click on that and we can see this one needs our signature. It's in red, we need it a signature. So we'll just put this in here. And we shall co-sign the transaction. You can see the amount, you can see uh, the multi-sig account it's coming from, where it's going to, 
uh, who the issuer was, which was the um, the current account, the crypto current account message holiday pay. Let's co-sign that. There we go. Co-sign sent. And now let's take a look. So we originally sent from the crypto current account, and we've just uh, co-signed it with an auditor. So that could be considered two. Let's just take a look and see if the account, if the money has been sent. Incoming transaction. There we go. This is the primary transaction. We have a co-signatory of one. And the transaction is still waiting to be included. There we go. The transaction is sent. Done. That's simple. So if we go over to the, um, the accountant's wallet, where is he? Come on. Okay, now the accountant should have just been paid a bit of holiday pay. There we go, fives them into the accountant. That's simple. So we have one person went for it first, then we've got somebody else second it. You can choose up to, I think it's 68 or 69 counter co-signers. Um, so it's quite a lot. This could get quite crazy. You can pretty much choose as many as you like. You could, like I say, you could have 60 co-signers and all 60 have to co-sign to allow the transaction to go through. Or you could just have three co-signers and two out of the three. Or you could have five and it has to be three out of five. So you might be feeling a little bit bad, a little bit sorry for these guys here from CoinCheck. Um, but maybe, you know, you've got a bit of a pirate in you and you quite like the idea that somebody like this has um, gone in and hacked their account and exploited some of the vulnerabilities and made himself a few Zem in the process. However, please bear in mind that um, it may have actually been somebody like this which has hacked in and is using the funds for some sort of terrorist organisation or goodness knows what. So, I mean... Really guys, hacking is not cool at all. Please be safe. Don't allow your funds to be used for anything that you wouldn't want them to be used for. And uh, set up a multi-sig account. If you do have a nano wallet, it is extremely easy as I just showed you there. And it's very, very flexible. So you can use any number of uh, cosigners, etc which I've already said, so I shall end the video there before I waffle on too much and waste any more of your time. So uh, please, if you've got any questions, please comment below. And also, if you want to be headed in, uh, put into the free prize giveaway, we, every single Monday we give away one of these posters here, and it's the periodic table of cryptocurrencies. So all you need to do is be a subscriber, like the page, and also uh, put a comment on Monday's video and you'll be automatically put in and every single Monday we draw out a winner and I just post it off to you anywhere in the world, no matter where you are, whether it's Australia, Russia, America, Canada, or the UK, um, anywhere you are, we'll just post that out for you absolutely for free. So um, that's about it, that's about it for today and I shall see you tomorrow.